Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. So uh, the topic for the today's session is uh, how API management makes your API safe from the top 10 OS API security threats. So uh, I'm uh, Kasim Tenokon, uh, an associate technical lead from WSO2 and uh, here with me, uh, joining with me is uh, Sanjeev Malagode, who is an associate director at uh, WSO2 API manager team. So let's get started now. So more than ever before, APIs are playing a central role in organizations and businesses everywhere. In many ways, APIs have become a major driving force in businesses. The advantage that APIs bring can also be massive liability due to exposure of major API security vulnerabilities resulting in data theft, unauthorized data manipulation, and downtime to critical business system, leading to business disruption and monetary loss. So this makes API security a top priority. OAPS, O Open Web Application Security Project. The most prevalent API security vulnerabilities have been identified by the Open Web Application Security Project, which is a nonprofit foundation that works to improve and establish security standards in the software industry. So here is a list of threats. Uh, 
Okay, so here is the list of threat which are identified as the OF's top 10 in API security, which was compiled in 2019. So we will go through each each one of these in, in this session. So it is important to understand these threats when you are designing, building, deploying, deploying your APIs. Con consideration also needs to be given to how these standards can be enforced through the entire develop development life cycle of an API, as well as how these threats can be mitigated in already existing APIs that are in use. So an API gateway is an ideal solution for combating these threats, acting as a central security enforcement point for all APIs. In today's uh, session, we will discuss about these threats and also look into at how an API gateway solution can be used to diffuse each of them securing your APIs and uh, yeah, and, and securing your API. So let's drive right in. So the first uh, security thread that we are going to discuss is broken object level authorization. So, so I will take an example here and API expose a resource which return personal information of a given user by referring to a numeric identifier, which is passed as a path parameter. So here it's uh, 1002. John is using an application that consumes this resource. John find out that application passes this numeric ID 1002 when calling the API resource to retrieve his information. So John guesses that this is the ID associated with himself in the system. So in here, John now knows that, so John guessed that 1002 is the ID associated with him. Since the IDs are often incremental, John replicates the request sent by the application to the API after changing the ID to 1001. Mary is the user that corresponds to the ID 1001. This API thinks that the request is being initiated by Mary via the application and sent Mary's personal information, which is intercepted by John. There are a couple of ways that an API gateway can help mitigate this threat. Let's take a look at them now. So the solution one is uh, an API gateway expose the same API via an alternative resource that is not depend on application supplying a numeric ID as a parameter. The gateway enforce an in industry standard authorization mechanism such as OAuth to secure the API. The application has obtained an access token on behalf of John at the time that he is authenticated by the application. This access token is sent by the application when it invokes the gateway resource. The gateway lookup uh, security token service or STS using the access token and identify the corresponding user is John. The STS stores the various user attributes, including the numeric IDs that are used by system to identify users and John's one is uh, 1002 is retrieved. So here the John's user ID is 1002 and it is retrieved from the SDS. The gateway invokes the API resource by specifying the numeric ID returned by the SDS and passes on John's information to the application. So now John get the response from the uh, REST API. And uh, in this way, the gateway prevents the vulnerable API resource which accept guessable numeric IDs from being exposed directly. Using authorization schemes such as OAuth to determine the identity of a user prevent unauthorized access to another user's information. So now uh, go to the solution two. So an alternative way of solving this problem can be to use the gateway to expose the API through a resource that accepts a non-guessable string ID such as UUID. So here now we have used UUID. Each user will be assigned a unique string ID. The application will send the string ID as a path parameter and the gateway will refer to a lookup table which maps the string ID to John's numeric ID. So here we get the 1002 back from the lookup table and the gateway invokes the resource by specifying the numeric ID returned from the lookup table and passes on John's information to the application. In this way, gateway prevents the vulnerable API resource which accept guessable numeric IDs from being exposed directly. 
Right, okay. So let's move on to the next step, which is broken authentication. So an API that exposes a resource that returns personal information uses built-in basic authentication as a security mechanism. So here you can see that basic, uh, we have user authorization header with the basic uh, uh, authentication value. Mary use an application that consumes this API, which will send Mary's credential in the authorization header along with the API call. The API authenticates that the call has been initiated, initiated by Mary and responds with Mary's personal information. So now unknown to Mary, her device become compromised and John gained access to it. So now here comes the John and because Mary needs to enter her credentials into the application, John is able to steal her credentials. Using Mary's stolen credentials, John is able to replicate the same API call and gain access to Mary's personal information by pretending as Mary. So this shows how simple authentication scheme such as basic authentication can be subverted. So now we can see that John was able to uh, get access to Mary's information. And uh, let's see uh, how we can uh, solve this problem using an um, API gateway. So instead of relying on a simple security mechanism such as basic authentication, an API gateway is used to expose the personal informa information API and uses a more secure authentication mechanism such as OAuth to protect it. The application has obtained an access token on behalf of Mary at the time that she is authenticated by the application. This access token is sent by the application when it invokes the gateway resource. The gateway look up a, a security token service or an a, or a SPS service using the access token and it is identified that this is a valid token belong to Mary. So we get the OK from the STS. The gateway forward the call to the API after substituting the authorization header with the basic authentication credentials of Mary that was, that was obtained from the STS. Mary information, so Mary's information is then returned in the response. In this way, an API that is relying on a less robust authentication mechanism can be shielded from direct exposure. So robust authentication mechanisms such as uh, OAuth are must must, uh, like much harder to subvert because they consist of generating so short time access tokens in a sequence flow that uses multiple factors which include uh, calling application client ID and client secret. So in the in addition to the user's credential and uh, an application, uh, sorry, uh, an application client secret is usually embedded with the application and is not not as easy to steal like uh, like in the basic basic authentication case. So even if the John somehow managed to steal the access token that was issued for Mary, his ability to pretend as Mary will be limited due to the short lifetime of the access token. Once the token expires, John will no longer be able to make use of it. The, advan the advantages cannot be gained when you advantage cannot be gained when using basic authentication as the primary authentication mechanism because user credentials tend to be more long lived. The ability to revoke an access token on demand that is, suspect, uh, that is suspected of having been compromised is another added benefit of using a scheme such as OAuth. So, so now here, if, if John uh, tries to invoke the API using a, uh, using a stolen access token and which is short lived and uh, uh, then he will get the uh, 401 unauthorized. And okay, so let's move on to our next thread, which is excessive data exposure. So an application consumes uh, an API, which provides a search functionality to query a given employee information. The application uses the API to display a given employee department. However, by analyzing the response received by the application when searching for Mary's department, John noticed that additional personal information fields are being returned. So this allows John to gain access to Mary's personal information. This can take place when a general purpose API is used in a, specific, uh, in a, in, in a specialized a scenario that only requires access to subset of information. So here, J John noticed that uh, he can access address and phone number uh, from Mary's information in, in, Mary, in uh, Mary's information. So 
let's uh, discuss about the solution. So the solution is since the application only requires the department of a given employee to be returned and API gateway can be used to inform, like can be used to transform the data returned by the API before sending the response back. So in this case, API gateway removes additional personal information from the payload and ensures that only what is required is returned, preventing excessive data exposure. So in here, you can see that uh, we get the we get the full response from the back end to the gateway and from the gateway we drop the uh, un, 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 um, unwanted uh, information from the payload and forward it back to the user okay so let's move on to the next thread which is lack of resources and rate limiting so exposing apis directly without a mechanism of controlling sorry control, controlling the rate of requests that are received can lead to system becoming overwhelmed in a scenario where there is a sudden surge of request or denial of service attack, being able to define a maximum threshold for the, uh, for the rate of input to an API is very important. In order to prevent service downtime or de degradation due to uh, exceeding of server resources. So the solution to this is, and uh, we can use an API gateway to shield the API from excessive requests by enforcing rate limiting policies ensuring uptime and high quality of service so server server resource can also be exhausted due to due to processing large or expanding malicious payload so this example so here now john sent this uh, payload this example shows the use of very common expanding message message payload known as xml bomb so this expand when being passed so this leads to a large amount of memory being consumed on the server. So as a solution to this, we can use an API gateway to enforce various threat detection policies such as uh, validating message payload size and depth. This helps pre preserve server resource at API level. So now you can see we are not passing through the request to the backend and we are just returning payload uh, 413 uh, response with payload to large message. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Broken function level authorization. So in here, we will take an example where an API exposed two resources. One, re one, re one returns commonly accessible employee information and the other returns privilege account information. Mary is a member of finance team and therefore when she logs into the application, it is allowed to consume accounts resource. So now Mary can, send, uh, Mary can consume this account resource and get the information. And then, then comes John. Okay, here is John, and who is not a member of the finance team and does not have direct access to the privileged account resource through the application. But then he discovered that such a resource exists on the API and directly calls it. So now he calls the API because the API does not have like does not do access privilege checks. John is able to gain access to other employees' account information. So in here. Uh, John John is able to get Roger Black um, account information, which is which he is not intended to uh, have. So then, uh, as a solution to prevent such unauthorized access, an API gateway can be used to enforce mechanisms such as OAuth scope based access control on privileged resource. So now here we have the finance uh, account resource again, and the gateway can query a security token service by giving the access token to determine what group the corresponding user belongs to so now uh, the now now mary uh, invoke the api again and now we use the security token service to uh, validate the user and if john attempts to call the api so now we uh, now mary get the response because he has uh, access to the account api right so so now if John attempts to call the account resource, the gateway will query the STS service and will discover that John is not member of finance group. So his access will be denied. Therefore, it denies the John access to the resource. This makes sure that the resource or function level authorization can be enforced. Okay, now, uh, okay, now we have covered up uh, the first uh, five or the five threads in the OSAP top 10. So so yeah, so we are halfway through the list. 
and uh, let me quickly recap the threads that we have discussed so far so we started with the uh, broken uh, object level authorization and then we discussed about bro broken user authentication and then we moved to excessive data exposure and and the last threat that we discussed was uh, lack of resource and rate limiting so okay so okay so let's move on and the next threat that we are going to discuss is mask assignment so right so in this scenario an api exposes a resource which allows users to update their personal information so john updates his information and sees that the response returned to the application contain a default value for the credit balance which was not specified in the request sent by the john application so here john send only john uh, name and phone number and in the response you can see the credit uh, value as 2000 so by retrieving this personal information john confirms that the credit balance is read only it's a read only data it's not meant to be updated by the application and is maintained by the system and and then john attempts to update the update his read on the credit balance by replacing the same request sent by the application and including the credit field with a value. So here, uh, now John John tried to uh, set a credit value as uh, 9,999. So the API blindly assigned the value provided in the request to its internal data structure without validating the value set. This caused internal manage, internally managed credit balance to be updated to the given value by John. So now in the response, you get the credit balance as 9,999. Okay, so now let's see the solution. So if, if you found this kind of API in the banking system, you can just uh, like update your credit balance and you can become rich. Okay, so now let's see the solution. So we can use an API gateway to expose the personal information API and validate the schema of the response of the request actually being sent. This will ensure that the request that contains a field other than the specified one will be denied. Thereby, we can prevent the exposure of API that is vulnerable to mass assignment. So in here, now we put an API gateway in the middle. And uh, even if, we, if, the, if John sent uh, uh, API request with uh, the credit value set to 9,000, whatever the value they want, he want, uh, the API gateway will, will immediately return 400 that request, like you can't set this value. OK, so let's move on to the next one. So the next threat is security misconfiguration. So shortcoming in the API implementation and how the API serve itself is configured could expo uh, like uh, itself configured could expose security vulnerabilities that can be exploited, such as um, exploited files and uh, un unnecessary feature enablement at the server level, and uh, could these kind of thing could could enable attackers to gain control of the API server itself, and security can be further further compromised by the api by the user by the use of un unsecured transport and uh, poor cost policy enforcement and verbose error messages which leak information like uh, which leak internal information so an api gateway the, the solution is an api gateway can act as the security interface to the api allowing users to centrally enforce uh, security it can be used to enforce cost policies, HTTPS transport, and also facilitates customized error handling. So securing the central centralized server that runs the API gateway is much easier than security in, like security in, uh, security in multiple API servers. Okay, so the next thread that we are going to look into is injection. So this is a very common uh, attack vector and you might have experienced this type of attack in your system or even have some uh, bad days because of this injection at attack. So these attacks mainly target the user input or the input of the API. So injection vulnerabilities can be like uh, vulnerability cause computing system to potentially process malicious data that at at attacker introduce. So in this scenario, John noticed that he needs to pass an ID as a query parameter to the API request, and it will send a response with the information that is current corresponding to that uh, specific ID. So, so here he passed the 1002, and uh, he, he noticed that, OK, he can get the uh, user information for that ID. So John update the query parameter with the 
a modified condition state conditional statement which get directly injected in the sql query used by the backend this leads to all the like the, this leads to all the results in the database table being returned so here now here john get like basically he get the db dump kind of thing so so this leads to like uh, get return and this attack can also be uh, used to remove table data or overload the database as well so you can if, if you identify such a uh, vulnerability so you can use it to do various things so now here we see the solution an api gateway can act as a secure interface to the api and scan for any malicious data in the http headers or in the query parameters or in uri paths and also check the request payload as well and requests that consist of injection attacks can be identified and denied so if if there was an api gateway in between then if even if john uh, send a like a modified request the api gateway will identify that and return 400 bad requests so john can, can't exploit that uh, vulnerability okay so let's uh, move on to the next one so improper asset management so in this sample scenario like um, john like it was discovered that the version one of the employee info search api exposed too much in too much personal information about the subject of the search so this was rectified in version two of the api and the and the latest version of the application were upgraded to use the new api version however due to existing legacy users that need to be supported version one of the api is still being run so john who is using the latest version of the application notice that the version two okay so notice that the version two of an api being used to retrieve the information so now what john does is by changing the version to version one in the url and invoke the api resource so now here john um, like uh, change the version to version one by intentionally and uh, invoke the resource so uh, now he discovers uh, the like initial version of the api is able to retrieve additional personal information about the subject of the search that should not be exposed so here in version one it returns phone and address information which is not supposed to be there okay so let's see the solution so now the solution is to use an api gateway to effectively manage the life cycle of an api and in this case deprecate the older version of the api when a new version becomes available so this allows existing legacy application who have already subscribed to api version one to continue use the use use that api so they can uh, continue use that api however the new applications are not allowed to subscribe to the api version one and if they try to access the older version then they will be denied so here like if, you know if john tries to access the older version they, he will get for zero three forbidden okay so in uh, scenarios uh, where there is no requirement to allow access to the older version of an api once the new version becomes available an api gateway can be used to manage the life cycle by uh, to manage the uh, sorry so to manage the life cycle by retrieving the old uh, sorry all the api version so this will uh, this will ensure that the api version one is completely removed from the api gateway and is no longer accessible to any application so now uh, if we have uh, like retired the older version which is version one and uh, it is no longer accessible so john cannot uh, use that older version and get the uh, like unintended use information through that so that's how you can manage the uh, assets properly using an api gateway so let's move on to the final risk so which is insufficient login and monitoring okay so again let's take the same sample scenario okay now uh, john has stolen mary's access token he used this token to view and alter some data mary find out mary, mary find out about this and inform the api owner okay and then the api owner revokes the compromised access token and issue mary a new one however the data that john had reviewed or altered is unknown since the api does not produce enough logs to investigate so it's it's harder to harder for us to determine what data might have been compromised by the john's action so the solution is 
Now, when API traffic is exposed via an API gateway, API request and the response metadata can be logged centrally. These logs can be investigated in this scenario to filter out what requests have been performed by the stolen access token, revealing the extent of John's infiltration. And okay, so now we have uh, an API gateway in between and it logs all the requests and responses so we can identify what are the what are the, uh, what are the what are the what are the actions done by John? Okay, okay. So let's take a look at a scenario where real-time monitoring is important. So Mary lives in the US and update information via her application, which invokes Info API, uh, which is exposed through an API gateway. The API gateway is able to identify that Mary is primarily uh, primarily uses the API from the US. So based on the so it, it identified it based on the IP address of her device which runs her application. And API gateway can be used to monitor API traffic for anomalies in access patterns. John residing in Argentina, he managed to steal Mary's access token and be and be and begins to invoke the API. In this case, it is recognized that instead of Mary's US IP address, an IP address from Argentina is submitting the API calls. So the API gateway flags this as suspicious activity and blocks the request made by John and informs uh, an administrator so that the appropriate ac action can be taken on their end. So now if uh, the now if John tried to access the API gateway from Argentina, the API gateway identified this as a uh, suspicious activity and it returns 403 forbidden. Okay, so now that wraps up our, yeah. So yeah, that's, I think I, uh, we have covered all the top 10 uh, OS uh, API security threats. And yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them now and yeah, we are happy to answer your questions. Kabun, I think we can uh, wrap up since we have we done yeah that. yeah okay uh, so yeah I think uh, okay thank you everyone yeah so uh, uh, yeah if you are throughout the session uh, just uh, visit our booth and uh, have an extra session with us thank you very much for joining the session yeah thank you very much and stay safe and enjoy the rest of the day thanks bye.